So I've grown to be the biggest magician on the platform. If you stick to it and believe in the vision, things will start coming to you. The team reached out, they said, let's do a video. Hey Gary, Luca G here. Luca G, Gary G. The producer of The Ellen Show wanted to get a magician on. And before I know it, I'm out on a plane to LA. Luca Galoni, thank you for joining me again on Pleasure. the Business Mentor Podcast. Again. I know, but I had to get you on because so much has happened since our episode. I think it was, was it last year we did our first episode together? Something like that. A long while. And the studio, look at the studio since it's got it's gone up a level. Well, when you get to a number one podcast, you know, you need to take it up a level, I think. I think uh, after you've been on the Ellen Show, we had to roll out the carpet just for you. Yeah. But that was an amazing story. Look, let, let, let's start there, the Ellen Show. So I'm sure everybody knows what the Ellen Show is about. I mean, the, the, the biggest celebrities in the world. Kim Kardashian's a president, and obviously Luca Galoni's been on there. Just tell us a bit about the experience. And firstly, how did that come about? So all that was, was I, I've been creating, you know, building this audience for myself, building this following, putting out this content. And then you, when, you, when, you make, when you start growing and start getting these viral videos, you know, you're getting so many views. I, I, you know, over the last year, I've probably got 3 billion plus views, you know, maybe more. So... When so many people are seeing your content, you're always going to get opportunities. So I, I started seeing these, op these little opportunities come in over time. And it was one of my videos, not even one of my most viral videos, actually. It was, one, it was just a cool video. Yeah. Went pretty, not mega viral, but pretty viral. But it got picked up by an American TV show. And they put it, it was, they, they, they covered sort of, viral videos across the internet and they talk about it so anyway my video got on and then it just so happened that at the time uh the producer at the ellen show you know wanted to get another magician on ellen hadn't seen a magician on the show for a while and and she she wanted some magic so yeah it was kind of right place right time they saw the clip contacted me next thing you know we have a conversation, yeah. and before I know it, I'm out on a plane to LA to go on the show, and uh, it was crazy. Because you, you know, we spoke obviously regularly, you mentioned the audience in America and what they're like, mm -hmm. the energy. Tell us a bit about that, because obviously the UK is it's a bit different. I know you've been on Britain's Got Talent as well, but what was the, the difference of the energy in the audience? It's crazy. These people are so, they're so excited to be on that show. It's unbelievable. Yeah. They, you know, in England, we're quite, we're more, we're more low key, I'd say. We're more reserved. Over there, it's, I mean, these people, this is the biggest show, the biggest talk show in the whole of America. And Ellen's got raving, avid fans yeah. all over the world. These fans have waited, for, bought these tickets, or well, applied for these tickets, and have waited years to get this opportunity to go on the show. There's such a massive waiting list to get on that show. And when they're there, that oh, the, the excitement in that in that room is amazing, and not only that, they they, they, they pump them up. They've got a DJ playing. They, you know, before the show, I'm backstage. Yeah. They've got a live TV link. There's yeah. people jumping up and down. They're dancing. It's it's unbelievable. Were you nervous going on such a big show? Yeah, I, I was a little bit. I mean, it it was it was more about the sense when you when you're there. It's not so much perform. It's not so much being on the show. Being on the show is a bit surreal yeah. in the moment. Yeah. It's all, it all happens so quickly. And next thing, I had to, when you're doing magic, there's so many things that can go wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're, if you're just doing an interview as a guest, like if I say something, if I stumble my words here, <laughs> yeah. you could, yeah. if I accidentally swore, you could probably bleep it out or cut it out. Or if I said something wrong, I could go, oh no, sorry, I meant this. Yeah. With magic, when you make, if you make a mistake, you're yeah. done that's it it's over so with that I think it's I think with magic you have to get everything just right so I was going in there I was very focused I had to I had to make sure I had every all my props ready all my tricks ready my whole routine was was smooth and then once you get out there you kind of have to forget all of that yeah and just focus on performing and it's yeah it was it was so funny I would prepared everything and the next thing you know Right, you're on next, Luca. You're backstage. Yeah. The crowd are the crowd are waiting, and then 
she, she turns around and says, yeah, Luca Galoni from yeah. the UK. Walk on, it's roar of the crowd. And that time when I walked on and met her, yeah. was the first time I actually met her. She doesn't want to see you before. She wants to be surprised. She wants to be totally unknown to what's going to happen. So when I walk on and shake her hand, that's the first time I met her. And yeah. before you know it, after seeing this show so many times on TV, on YouTube yeah. and all that, you're literally closer to her than I am to you, sat on the sofa next to her. It's like you're in, in a front room yeah. and, uh, with the crowd watching. And she's, right, you're going to show some magic? Go, go ahead, do it. We've got a bigger crowd, haven't we, guys? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> so, no, that's, that's amazing. By the way, if you haven't checked it out, make sure you check it on YouTube because social media went crazy. I know there was the media coverage... Um, because, you know, for a UK person to go over to the US and to be on that show was amazing. So you know, make sure you check that out. And look, you know, your growth has been phenomenal. Um, what are you on Instagram at the moment? Two about, million. Two million. I mean, obviously when you were growing and you just looked at people at two million, you <coughs> just think, wow, we'll ever get there. You know, what was your, what's your journey been like to get to two million? Because two million now is, is, is influencer status, obviously. Um, you know, how has it changed the way you are and what you do? You know, when we could share with the audience who are trying to build their social media up as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a, it's been a pretty crazy journey. My, my way of growing has mostly been based on creating viral content that yeah. will get shared, will get millions of views and get gain me followers from the content itself. That's been my key. So I've focused on the content first yeah and then built from there so i kind of had an idea of what it took to get viral but it's it's one of those things which i worked out over time and there'll be a lot of people out there that they want to create content yeah. they don't know what kind of content to create i'd say to anyone i mean if you look at the amount of content i've created over the last year and a half you know uh or whatever maybe a bit longer it's a lot of content that I've gone through yeah. to get to this point. So that's 2 million on uh, Insta, 5.5 million on TikTok. And uh, yeah, I didn't just get it straight away. It wasn't an overnight thing of I just, right, this is how you go viral, bang. This is, yeah. It was a case of trying lots of different things. And not only that, improving myself and learning how to present these videos to to make them the most viral, you know, yeah. so like doing acting lessons with our friend Mark Pegg, who, yeah, who's yeah. been on the podcast awesome as well, yeah, awesome. and uh, improving my presentation in terms of, I'm not, you know, getting my head around certain things. Like if you're, if you're just starting creating videos, sometimes you forget that your audience is through the lens That's on right. the people watching on their phone. It's not the people necessarily who are, uh, you, uh, you know, in some ways, you're my audience here. Yeah, yeah. In other ways, people at home are my audience. The cameras are the... Yeah. So at all times I'm thinking about how can I make this relate to them yeah. uh, and things like that. And you're doing the same when you're doing a podcast. And you learn that over time with the podcast yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, yeah, there's certain things you pick up. And I just, and I just started creating this content. And um, it's slow at first, but you have to believe in the, in the process. So um, I can remember two of my... You say two million seems would have seemed a lot at the start. Well, um, two of my biggest mentors, Woody and Kleine, who have now got about five million on yeah, Instagram. Doing great things. They were on about, they've done amazing. When I met them, I was on about 100,000 on Instagram and they were on around 1.6 million. Yeah. And they seemed like giants to me at the time. And it seemed so far off where I was going to, where I was at the time that it was, it, you couldn't even get your head around it. Yeah. And then, what? Fast forward just over a year, and I was up to where they were when I met them. Yeah, you know, and uh, you just have to believe in the vision, really. And, and, and I can obviously, me and Luca, we've been talking and doing things together for a while. But I can remember, you know, as a business sense, you committed. And I can remember you making the move to different locations: London, Mexico, <laughs> um, uh, Portugal. And you really went full into it. So there's a lesson itself in there that, you know, if you commit fully and you, you put the work in, things do tend to work out. Um, obviously, you, you've tried lots of things and worked with loads of people. But, I mean, how was the fame aspect? Because I know, you know, you get spotted. In fact, this is a funny story because we went to Prince Charles's 
70th birthday and um you know I like I like to I like to think I'm well known but we went on the train didn't we and we caught the train as soon as we got on the train someone rolls up recognize you just out the blue and then wants a selfie with you and you're getting that more and more now so how how has that been now with with all these followers you got and the fame that comes with it I mean it's uh I'm certainly not at A-list status yet, but I, I sometimes think about these A-listers like you know someone like Ed Sheeran or you get Leonardo DiCaprio, someone like that. Yeah, it must be. Uh, it can't even be that pleasant. You can't even leave the house. You can't. You can't go yeah. out and do normal things. I'm not at that level yet, but you certainly see a difference quite early on when you start growing an audience because um, even if you haven't got a huge following, you can create a bit of a celebrity status. And a, and, a, and a celebrity in your niche, which is what I think everyone should aim to do. You know, where they create this uh, aura where you know other people will look up to you yeah. as as a leader in that in that in that space. I think that's what people aim to do. They want yeah. to become an expert in whatever field they're in, and that's what most people should do with social media. For me, it was it's a it's a little bit different because I'm not creating content like you where it's you know, to, to um, necessarily, you know, inform people. Yeah, yeah. It's more to, it's more, I'm an entertainer. Entertainment, yeah. So it's a little bit of a different fandom you get in that space. And I, can, I, got, I always remember the first time I got recognised and uh, you, you just, someone comes, oh, wow, are you Luca from Instagram yeah, or whatever? Yeah. yeah, you're that magician. Oh, wow. Oh, God, can we have a selfie? Oh, my God, this is so crazy. Yeah. And, and you kind of, uh, the first time it, you, you, you sort of really, you remember it because it mean, ne- that's never happened before. You've gone your whole life, yeah. you've been doing this one little thing, social media for a you know, couple of months or you know, six months, eight months, 12 months. And then all of a sudden, someone else views you as a, a celebrity in their eyes. And, it's, and the first time it happens, yeah, it is quite weird. It's quite of a weird th- feeling because... You know, if you lived ha- however many years without that, and then some, all of a sudden somebody sees you in a different way as opposed to yeah. another random person, kind of shocks you. And then, and then it happens again, and it happens again, and then to the point where it's, you know, hap- happens all, all the time. And uh, it, it definitely has its ups and downs. It definitely has its pros and cons. Yeah. You know, uh, for example, I don't really like filming in public anymore uh, as much because... For one, it's disruptive because you're always getting spotted and getting reckoned. People, you know, basically interrupting your working day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and, and you can't be, you can't be, you know, even if you're in the middle of something, you can't be a, you can't be horrible to them. You, you, you have to, you know, be nice and you know yeah. have the photo or whatever. And then secondly, if you're trying to film something and you're creating the content and you've got other people around spotting you and then filming it themselves and saying, oh, wow, I spotted these. You don't want people to see the necessarily behind the scenes of what you're doing. You want to just yeah. create the content in your own way, in your own vision, and then put it out there as a final product. You don't want someone on Snapchat from a, a bad angle, you know, yeah. exposing something or, you know, because a lot of the tricks that I do, if you come from, say, a backwards angle or something like that, you could probably expose the trick. Yeah. So I'm very careful now. I'm very wary of, of, of doing things like that because I don't want... Uh, I want to keep my content, you know, keep in control of my own content. Yeah, because um, ultimately, you know, your videos are getting millions of views. So you want to do it right, don't you? So go on Instagram before we move on to TikTok, which I know is, is a growing platform. If somebody's starting off now, what, what do you think of Instagram? Because recently with my Instagram, the likes have gone, um, the views are gone now. Um, and people talk about the engagement going. Obviously, we have a lot of um, influencers talk about that. Now, you being in the game as an influencer, where do you see Instagram going at the moment? I think, I think it's difficult to say at the minute. It's, it's in a bit of a transition phase, I think, Instagram is. Um, you've got... You've seen what happened with Facebook. Facebook yeah. was the platform. And obviously, over time, all these platforms age up. So now Facebook... I think my granddad's got a Facebook account now. Uh, so kids don't want to go on there. It's not cool when your parents are on there or yeah. your grandparents are on there. They want to be on Instagram. Now, Instagram, people's parents are going on Instagram now. So they want to go onto TikTok. Yeah. So uh, what's changed is that, well, with Facebook, obviously, they took away the organic reach yeah. for influencers, which a lot of my friends, some of my friends' careers were just ruined overnight because... 
<laughs> they had, they put all their eggs in Facebook. Yeah. And then Facebook just cut the reach like that overnight. And they went from getting 100 million views to struggling to get 10,000 views. Yeah. It was really, really crazy drop, the way they drop, cut yeah. it. Yeah. And with Instagram, I think it's difficult to know what they're, they're going to do. So with Instagram, I hammered the phase of top reach. So they had this time where the reach was amazing. And I was getting vids. I've got loads of vids with 8 million views, 7 million views, 6 million views, um, 5 million views. And by the way, probably my biggest viewed one with 8.5 million views, I got when I was on about 350,000 followers. Right, so yeah. So you can imagine yeah, the, the reach, was there. The reach yeah. that you can get was in, insane. Now, my kind of average is about 1.5 million, 1.6 million at the minute in the last you know, month or so. Which is still good. Yeah, compared to what's but, happening, yeah. You know, and it's actually one of the best in terms of what I've seen other people getting. But when you compare it to what I was getting before, it's nowhere near as much. They've definitely cut the reach. So I think organic growth on Instagram is quite difficult. There's still ways to grow. And I think Instagram's still got a lot of power. But I'm just trying to get my head around in the minute what Instagram are doing. It's just, TikTok's came in. TikTok's got a much younger well, audience. Have, have stories gone higher on Instagram? Because I know we spoke previously. The Sto reach stories, ha stories have, they have increased the story reach in terms of before with Instagram. Instagram stories were a great invention by, well, they weren't an invention by Instagram. Yeah. They were bought into trying to take out Snapchat. Snapchat came in with Snapchat yeah. stories and all of, all of a sudden Snapchat had this <clears throat> massive rise in popularity and then Instagram came in overnight and just Instagram stories and took out Snapchat like that. It was really, it was really an unbelievable move. Do you think Instagram still got a, a place if someone's now looking to grow their social media? I know we're going to TikTok in a second, but do you think Instagram has still got the potential for people to grow the brand, the business through that? It's still got massive, um, there's still a massive audience on Instagram. Yeah. Instagram is still the most popular app out there on social media. And all these, you can use all of these apps, you know, there's always going to be ways to grow on these apps and ways to build an audience on these apps. With Facebook, you're, you've got boosted posts, you've got groups, which they're really pushing. Yeah, yeah, you've groups, got yeah. um, personal pages. Instagram, you can boost posts as well. There's other ways to grow outside of just going viral. You know, a lot of people watching your podcast might not want to go viral like I did. They might want to just put out valuable content yeah, just put that people out content like. for the followers, yeah. But it's all about the audience that you want to aim for. If you want to aim for an older audience, still Facebook is a great platform. Yeah. Because Facebook, you're going to get, you, you know, if, you, if you're aiming for kids, you're going to go to TikTok. If you're aiming for seven to 13 year olds, you're not going to go to Facebook because they're not on Facebook. If you're aiming for maybe later teens, 20s to 30, you might go to Instagram uh, and like vice versa. It depends on your target Age market. Yeah. And then I think you should be on all of them. But yeah, let's face it. If you're aiming for a much older audience at the minute, there's not much point in going on TikTok. Because you... And, and you know Facebook's organic reach is particularly dead, but you never know because the other day we spoke and one of your videos nearly hit 800k with, without you knowing it. So you just don't know, do you? Sometimes, um, the old, even if you're posting a different on Facebook, it's still go quite big, isn't it? So people neglect platforms, but you never know when that reach is going to come back up. And also, even if you had a business which only catered to an older audience now, there's no, there's no reason why you shouldn't even just make a TikTok account. Yeah. Why not? Why not just get your account? And then if in five years' time there's uh, pensioners on TikTok, yeah. my granddad's on TikTok, so... Um, well, it's funny. I took your advice and I've got a TikTok account now. What's my handle, Kyle? Jaden in the UK. And I put some video out and uh, I think we did a table tennis one. We've got like 2,000 views on it. More than my Facebook sometimes. So... The platform's there, and obviously people like Gary Vee are pushing it. Um, so Instagram to the platform. Any tips around Instagram that you can share with the listeners? With Instagram, look, look to use all the features. 
because uh, and try different things because Instagram, Facebook became a platform, almost like a, a hybrid platform in that it's a mixture of everything. So Facebook started off as just a friend platform, pages came in, videos came in, photos came in. You can do everything, text, videos, photos, groups, yep. marketplace. Facebook's right. like an amalgamation of everything. Everything, yeah. It's like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, eBay, and all the rest of it thrown in. So Instagram is going a little bit the same way in the sense that it's got photos, it's got carousel photos, yep. it's got stories, it's got um, links, it's got videos. Lives as well. It's right? got live streams, it's got uh, IGTV longer form videos, yeah, yeah. which get better reach than main posts, normal main posts actually. And um, has it got groups as well? Can you create groups? You can in? create groups in DM. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, in DM, you've also got video calls. You've got audio uh, messaging. So they're adding to it. You've got loads of stuff. Yeah. So it's really got. A, you know, so it's, it's like a messaging platform as well as yeah. a social media platform. So if I was someone on Instagram, I would try and use all of its avenues. I'd, I'd, I'd experiment around. It might be that you can connect with people on live streams. It might be that you can, uh, you're really great at the stories and, and, and connecting with people on a daily basis. It might be that you're a great photographer and, and you, or you know a great photographer and you can create great photos and write amazing long captions with value in it in the photos. It might be that you're great at speaking on video. Or, yeah. Um, it might be that you're, you're better at speaking in a longer form and you want to do an IGTV that's 10 minutes long rather than a, a 30 second micro clip video, you know? One thing I did think Instagram's good for is um, DMing. I just found that the platform, when I've DM DM'd like higher guests, um, they seem more reactive on Instagram at the moment than on Facebook. So it's a good way to reach influencers if you want to connect with them. That's pretty cool. Also, it's easier to re reply to a DM and le lower investment than replying to an email. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. So it's still you can still grow on Instagram, and there's ways of doing that. And obviously, just like I said, put good content out there. Check this right. And also, if you think about it, with the other features as well, I've seen people do. That. I've done this myself. If you want to get hold of someone on a DM, on an email, you're just sending text. On a DM. You can send a video, yeah. you can send an audio note. So you can really put across a lot more personality and persuasion, you know, when you're trying to get hold of someone or contact someone and who seems out of reach. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you where I saw power in that because when we launched the podcast, we went to number one, uh, we did really well. And then I had a, a voice, uh, a video, and uh, I'd never seen a video before. And it was Lauren Tick now, friend. And she just happened to send a video message saying, Jay, you'd love to go on your podcast. And I just thought that was amazing. Compared to just messaging, and I've tried it a few times myself, having a personalised video to somebody is a lot more powerful. But so yeah, so Instagram's still a good platform. So TikTok. Now TikTok is the hot topic at the moment. Now what are you on? 5.4 at the moment? 5.5. 5.5, sorry. I've, 100,000, uh, uh, so 5.5 at the moment. And there's a lot of talk to it though, but I know that you went on TikTok quite a while back before even anybody's talking about it. So tell us a bit about TikTok and why you went on TikTok originally. And when did you start TikTok? So I started TikTok when it wasn't even called TikTok. I started TikTok when it was called Musical.ly. So before it was TikTok, it was Musical.ly. Yep. And it started, I'm not sure the exact year it started. It's been around, it's been around a decent amount of time now, not as long as Instagram. Yep. And it started off as a lip syncing app. So the reason it was called Musical.ly was because you could choose a song to play in the background and you could lip sync over it. Yeah. I know your daughter likes to do that. She's, um, she's content loves, crazy. Loves that. Yeah. So, it was a cool way for people to, you know, make videos and dance videos to their favorite songs. And at the same time, it kind of opened the door for anyone to really create this content. So, you know, how old's your daughter look? Seven, seven, eight? She's eight now. Eight. Uh, yeah. So she's been creating little TikTok videos for the last year or two. Yeah. She can just pick up the phone 
pick a song, create a little video, the yeah. editing's all in the app. Yeah. So it's a really appealing way. Whereas with, with Instagram and YouTube particularly, the, the barrier to entry to create content is a yeah. lot higher. So TikTok kind of made it easy for everyone to create content just on their phone. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, so anyway, I, I got on there, I don't know, maybe like I say about a year, just over a year ago, maybe, maybe close to a year and a half, maybe a bit, probably a bit less. And I joined it when it was not that well known. You know, a few people knew about it, but I'd seen one magician particularly uh, who started making these little videos on there and he got quite a big following. He got like half a million followers. And I thought, wow, wow, this is, this is interesting. I'd not, I'd not even heard of the platform. Yeah. Went on there and this random guy has got hundreds of thousands of followers. So it got my attention, especially because it was a magician doing it. Yeah, yeah. So I just, I just made an account. I just started making videos on there. And within a couple of weeks, I got my first semi-viral video. I got a million, two, couple of million views on a video. And at the time, I was, I was struggling a bit on Instagram as well. I got about 100,000 on Instagram and I was not getting the views at the time. My algorithm was struggling a bit. So I, I got into the app and I started posting more and more and more. And slowly I built this, built a, fo a following for myself. The beauty of that app is that back then and even now, you can build an audience um, very, very naturally. So it's, it's like with, with Instagram, to grow an Instagram, it's quite hard to, ver to really organically build an Instagram now because... Because the organic reach the down. Reach, yeah. yeah. And it goes to your followers, doesn't it? Whereas I think TikTok goes to everybody. Yeah, so TikTok, it's a lot easier to hit. On Instagram, it's the explore page. On TikTok, it's the, um, the organic reach is much higher. It's a feed, isn't it? Because when I go on TikTok, I yeah. get random videos that I'm not even following. Whereas I think on Instagram, is it discovery? You've got to get on the discovery page. And yeah, the explore page. So there's explore a big page. fundamental difference between TikTok and Instagram. So basically what happened with TikTok is they... They were known as a lip syncing app and they yep. started wanting to create more. Um, they wanted to, I think they wanted to barge in on Instagram's territory and cr be more of a general entertainment video platform. So they wanted to change their name um, from Musically because Musically had this, it had this reputation of being just for kids. It was just about a music lip syncing app and they wanted to come away from that. So they're actually a Chinese company, they've got a Chinese app called TikTok. Yeah. They merged the two and they changed the name to TikTok. And they were more, and so it was more about just general videos now. So what they did, um, so th that was the first big move that they made. Now, the, the big difference between the two apps is really simple. And it's that when you open Instagram, the first thing you see is your homepage with the people you follow, right? And you have to click the little magnifying glass to see the explore page where you see like the recommended videos for you. TikTok is the opposite. So TikTok, when you open the app, yeah. you instantly see the for you page, which is like the explore feed. Yeah, yeah. So it's videos from around the platform. And you have to click separately onto the following page to see the people you follow. So all the videos going onto the for you page are videos that are going viral, that are that have been recommended because, um, because they're, they're getting good engagement yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Not all of them, actually. This is the beauty. Every, every video does hit the, the, the For You page yeah. on, on TikTok. It's just a case of how big it hits the For You page. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's the big, that's the big difference. So their, their, their main aim is to push things through a viral, viral audience on the, on the For You, rather than organic. Yeah. Um, people who are following it. So do because obviously a lot of influencers are talking about TikTok now, and obviously I know you were on it well before. Do you think people are coming on TikTok now because Instagram reach is dying? And obviously with, you know, with TikTok now, you get half decent video, can just go into like millions of views. I mean, what's your biggest viewed video? 115 million. That's crazy, do you know what I mean? So what I'm saying is, do you think it's one of the reasons why people will migrate from Instagram into TikTok because the reach is there, obviously the attention's there. 
obviously, the, I'm not sure what the audience at the moment, but people are, it's growing up, isn't it? It's maturing I up. I mean, for me, for me being someone who was on TikTok before it was even TikTok. Yeah. So Gary V comes out and he starts hyping this platform up. He's not the first person to start hyping it up, but he's a big influencer. Yeah. The first big influencer to come out and really go, you gotta get on TikTok. Everyone's gotta be on TikTok. You know what it's like when he pushes a platform? Yeah, yeah. Everyone all of a sudden thinks they've gotta get on there. Now the thing is, he's got a lot, he's a great guy, he's got a lot of supporters. I was saying this, I was saying this yeah. over a year before he even started saying that. When you see people, you see people coming on, yeah. I think it's because of the hype and I think it's because of the decreased reach and the reach you can get on TikTok. I know a guy, <clears throat> you see on Instagram, to get a good amount of views, you've got to already have a good following to hit the explore page. It's very unlikely that you're going to get a you know, massive viewed video if you've got a thousand followers. It's just mm. not going to happen. Mm. Yeah, that's right. So the beauty about TikTok is if you produce a viral video, because everything hits the For You page anyway, you've got a very, you've still got a good chance of going viral, viral. Yes. Even if you've got barely any followers. I know one guy who had a thousand, maybe less than a thousand followers, and he put a video out, he, got, he had an idea for a sketch, puts it out on TikTok, Overnight, gets 25 million views on this video, grows 55,000 followers, and all of a sudden he's off away on this platform. And you just can't do that on Instagram. No. You can't do that on any other platform. You can't get views like, you can't get views like that for a start, like 25 billion, I've got some 80 millions, I've got some 100 millions, I've got yeah. 50 millions. You can't get views like that on any other platform anymore, other than maybe YouTube, but even on YouTube it's very rare. But to get it that easily and quickly like Especially that. Especially the number of followers, you know? Yeah. Like that's the biggest thing. Normally, like, people have got hundreds of millions of followers to get that reach. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's an amazing organic reach on there, um, which is, is obviously... Do you, do you think it'll continue there, or do you think they'll do the same thing as... I think, I think for now, for now it's going to continue because they just want to get as... Met as many users as possible. It's really interesting. What I think what's gonna, I think the next year is gonna be gonna be really interesting because uh, I think the uh, where both plat where both Instagram and TikTok go is gonna yeah. be interesting to me because TikTok is obviously growing massively. For me, the success or failure of that platform will be dictated on how creators can monetize. Yeah. It's all a business at the end of the day. Of course, yeah, yeah. If you can't make the money on TikTok, what, even if you're getting 70 million views on a video, why would you stay there? So I've, I, they make it quite hard to monetize at the minute because if you put hashtag ad, which you have to put by law, if yeah. you uh, do an advert, you get much decreased reach. So it's a bit of a problem when you're, when you're when you're trying to make money on there. But I created all this on TikTok out of speculation. It's a lot easier to grow on TikTok than it is to grow on Instagram. It's much, much easier. Yeah, so if you're watching this now and you know, you've got access to someone who's got 5.5 million followers and I can't, I can't even think the amount of views you've got combined at the moment. So they want to get on the TikTok platform, what tips would you give them to, to, you know, to, to get them off the ground and start building some audience? Because obviously the reach is there, the opportunity is here. We don't know where it's going to go, but you know, the growth is there. So any, any tips you can share? I'd say, I'd say first thing is play, to the, play into the hands of the platform. So respect the native... Um, the native video of that platform. So it's, it's vertical video. Okay. So make, you, make sure your videos are vertical. It's not, it's not entirely, if you've got some videos that aren't fully vertical, you know, then that's- So when you're filming of the film, yeah. yeah. So, or if you've filmed it landscape, try and crop it down so it's vertical because- Okay, yeah. Generally, I've seen, except, I've seen a few exceptions, but generally by having, by having it, you know, fitted to the platform 
it will do better for a start. So if you put landscape videos, it just it's, you're just not going to get the, you know, if you just take what you put on YouTube and just bang it straight across to TikTok, it's not going to do as it's well. Not made, yeah, okay, that's a good, good tip. So that that's number one. Look at the trends. Look at the hashtags. You know, there's a lot of hashtags. TikTok is obviously built on trends. So many massive trends that happen with TikTok. Yeah. Um, not only that, the power of these trends is immense. There's been there's been songs that have been rocketed to number one uh, across on the, back the world of TikTok. because of TikTok. Of trend, People, yeah. you know, music producers are, um, are writing songs specifically to try and go viral on TikTok. They're trying to add some kind of sketch into the... Which makes sense. Yeah. 185 million views on a track. It's, it's unbelievable. And once these things go viral on TikTok, they go viral everywhere. Yeah. Because the great thing that made TikTok grow, or Musical.ly grow, so basically the story of Musical.ly was they were really struggling um, to grow. And then what they did was they made it so you could download... Uh, when you download a video to share it to another platform, yeah. it automatically put the, the, the watermark, uh, the Musical.ly watermark, and now it's the TikTok watermark on the yeah, video. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So all the, they've got all these viral videos going on all the time, yeah. which are very easy to find on the, on the For You page. And they get shared on Twitter, they get shared on Instagram, they get shared on YouTube, they get shared everywhere, and they've always got the watermark on them. So I noticed that, yes, yeah. So every single time they're shared, TikTok's getting more brand awareness and more reach. Ah, so got it, got it, yeah. So that's a reason why. Um, that's the reason why it's grown. That's crazy because you know my daughter did a good video with a friend. It was so easy to download and WhatsApp it to another friend because I wanted to see it. So I get that now. It's very easily shareable. What they did you can't was do that on Facebook. It's so hard to do that. You have to go through like, tools to download stuff. I think they realised that they weren't the biggest yeah. platform. Yeah. So they had to play into the hands of... They had to be open to having things shared on other platforms to grow their own platform. Yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely. So well, that, that's your second tip. You got any more tips? So one is... Yeah, so look, look, at, look at the trends. Try and yeah. jump on some of the trends if you can and, and, and angle your content around those Does trends. Does hashtags work on TikTok then? Yeah. And yeah. is there like a number you should use? Because I know before on Instagram people just overload hashtags... I don't think it really matters too much. You don't, you don't want it to look horrible. Spammy. Type, I prefer yeah. it to look less. I prefer it to look a bit more clean than have ten hashtags. How many would you recommend? Two or three? <sighs> two to five. Or maybe just test it out. I suppose. Two to five. It's, it's really not going to make a massive difference two either to, way. Okay. Cool. I, I don't. I don't think. And then yeah, on top of that. Obviously, if you can collaborate with a bigger influencer as well, then that's great. I think great. you had Gary V chasing you for a collaboration. Yeah, I've done a collaboration with Gary V. So when Gary V, Gary v wanted to uh, start growing on the platform, yeah, he went hey, there. You know, his team reached out to a few uh, big influencers on the platform. I had about five million at the time. Yeah, and uh, he said, "Let's let's do a video." So we did kind of a virtual collaboration where I asked him a question and then he answered the question. Hey Gary, Luca G here. Luca G, Gary V. Now, I love TikTok. I built 4 million followers on that app. So, my question to you is where do you see that platform going in the next 6 to 12 months? Uh, great question. My prediction for TikTok for the next 6 to 12 months is ridiculous growth, aging up, becoming more of a platform for 18 to 35, much more creativity, much more in a news cycle, more talk on you know other platforms, more talk on the late night shows, just growth, growth, growth. I'm very bullish on the next six to 12. What about content wise? Cause they're good to post to one. What about content? Is there any ideas around content? Keep it short. Short, okay. You any, know. what, seconds or minutes or anything? Um, there's always exceptions to the rule. I would say videos between videos under 15 seconds probably generally would do better. Okay, that's that's a very general rule. I've had videos a minute long that have done really well. Yeah, but you can only you can only do up to a minute. But is it is it 15 seconds because the audience likes swiping through quickly, or is there? It's just the the younger you get, the shorter the attention span. Oh, okay, got it. Got so. It. If 30 seconds on Instagram is good, 15 seconds on TikTok is good. 
it's not it's a general rule i mean i've got video like i said i've got videos of all lengths yeah but it's harder to keep someone on there the reason i can keep people on for a minute is because i've i've nurtured the my 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 methods of viral getting viral videos and yeah. keeping people hooked and engaged all the way through if i didn't know that and and if i hadn't had all that experience doing that i'd probably be better off just sticking to 10 to 15 seconds every time cool and content wise any type of content or just try try and take try and take a content so look gary v is a great example of this because his content isn't kind of content which you would generally consider to be content that would appeal to a younger audience yeah but what he does very cleverly is he his team he's got an amazing team so they'll they'll add little uh captions uh subtitles emojis they'll make things a bit of a they'll make his content a bit more of a meme have yeah, a meme yeah. feel to it um so it kind of makes it you know more appealing to a younger audience it also do things like there'll be certain things that certain videos that do really well for him are when he talks about topics that would appeal to a younger audience yes so he'll talk about something like going to college or um your parents yeah and flipping school, school yeah, yeah, or yeah. yeah yeah or yeah making money by we, flipping things at a gar gar uh, garage sale so things that would could appeal to a younger audience there's a lot of young people out there who uh don't like school and yeah. he teach and he puts a video out saying i'm proud that i failed school yeah uh, I, you know because i was an entrepreneur yeah, yeah. and just because you fail at school doesn't mean you're a failure yeah. and that appeals to a lot of young people yeah. who are struggling at school and it also triggers young people who are really proud of what they're doing at school and really work hard and whatever so it's kind of controversial, controversial but it, yeah it's you know he's not gonna he's not gonna post things that would appeal to 50 plus year olds it plays with narrative because he mentions that on his on his normal post so i mean that's some great tips on, on growing on, on, on TikTok itself. I mean, what's your plans with TikTok? Are you still going to continue growing on that platform? I'm just going to continue goals? growing that. Uh, so I've grown to be the biggest magician on the platform. Yeah. So I just want to take that forwards now, you know, take it to the next level. Um, TikTok, the, the amount of time I have to put into TikTok to grow TikTok compared to Instagram and YouTube when I really kick that off, it's so small compared to those that... Yeah. I can just continue to grow that and grow that and grow that without taking away from my other side of it as well. Uh, so. so we're saying um, probably 20 million this time next year when we get you back onto the podcast? Yeah, let's go for 20. I, I want to get to 10 as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, 20 is the next target. It won't be that. long. But yeah, that's some great tips. And I think, you know, the reason I want to talk to you about TikTok because, you know, musically, when you first started talking about the platform, and I've seen your growth over the last year, year and a half. And uh, when, when Gary Vee's come out with it, um, you know, we already knew that that was a good platform to grow on. So look, I'm sure you guys have got some great tips there. Make sure you get on TikTok. Just give it a go. Well, I've started it and you never know where it can go. So talk about, so I want to talk about your brands that you work with. Because obviously, Luca does stuff on social media and there's lots of fun on it. But ultimately, you know, um, Luca's got a very business-minded um Head to us, he's obviously worked with the best, so he's got that. <laughs> but, you know, we always focused around making sure it's, you know, it's focused around an aspect. So talk about some exciting brand deals like Formula E and traveling around the world. And, you know, as much as people see you posting the back end, you are a business itself. You know, you're a brand. You've now got a team talking to clients around the world, Hong Kong, um, uh, TikTok. What kind of things have happened for you on, on the brand sense? And tell us a bit about that as well. Yeah. Brand deals have always been a big part of the, the business behind it. Yeah. See, when, when I started, you know, people, see to, people only see the, uh, the, front, the front end. They see, the, they see the, the having fun, making videos. They see the end result. They see... They see all the things that, that I want my audience to see, you know, because different to an influencer like Gary Vee or Grant Cardone, I, as much as I 
like the business side and much as I would love to say, oh, look, look, look we're doing a, a podcast right now, fantastic, great stuff. Yeah. I don't always show this side of stuff because yeah. my audience aren't necessarily interested in that. They're more interested in the entertainment. You know, yeah. They don't care that I've got a business meeting or I'm signing a contract. All yeah. they care about is they, they don't want to know that side. They, they, they just think, want, to, want to believe you know, people have a certain idea of what they want to believe. Yeah, and that yeah. is that I, I'm just out there having fun and that's my life and that's it and traveling. And, but in reality, there's a lot of the business side that, that, yes. that's not shown. Um, so it was always a business to me. I always had it in the back of my mind, the business model of being an influencer. And brand deals are a big, big part of that because brands will pay a lot of money to reach your audience. Because yeah. when you build an audience, you not only build a following of people, but you build uh, a, loyal, a loyalty in that people trust you. You're an influencer, you are yeah, an influencer, yeah. but people, people trust you to, you know, as long as you don't spam your audience and sell anything, they have a trust in you to only promote really products that you believe in. Yeah. So when you put your name and, and, and you put, you, you, you're an ambassador for a product, they get on board and they want to follow suit and they believe that just because you've said it, yeah. It's, it's good. And that's why I try to have a, a, an integrity with it where I don't really promote products. And, and I reject a lot of, I say no to a lot of yeah. deals. And we have a weekly meeting sometimes and you turn around a lot of, you turn down a lot of brands because it doesn't fit with you. And I think that's important, right? Because obviously the audience, you have a sense of loyalty around the audience. Um, and what were the cool brand deals that, that you've looked at? Yeah, one of one of them was uh, one of them was Formula E, uh, which what was that like? Because that's getting big now, Formula E. Yeah, Formula E, that was amazing. So they, they flew me out to Mexico City to do magic around the the audiences and the the atmosphere of the day on the on the um, on the event on yeah. the Formula E ra uh, race. Yeah, I had in Mexico, which was great fun, and uh, that was a brilliant brand deal that uh, that I did. There's been uh, I've worked a lot worked a lot with TikTok actually yeah. promoting them via my Instagram page, working with uh, brands uh, like Bang Energy who uh, a great great brand to, for influencers to work with. Who I, I make videos weekly for them on yeah. my Instagram. I've worked to promote a magic set recently on TikTok, which was a great brand deal for yeah, me. Yeah, because you're getting inquiries for TikTok now, which is yeah which is yeah crazy, yeah. Right? TikTok's all of a sudden got. Had, from having no value, all yeah. of a sudden the, the, the value of my following is worth a lot. Yeah. So, um, and that's a great example of someone looking at my niche, and my niche is magic, yeah, yeah. wanting to sell a magic set, wanting to sell to people who want to learn magic. So great, let's find a magician yeah. who's got an audience of people who can perform magic and uh, pay him to do tricks with our set and promote our set. So yeah. I did that, it was a really successful campaign. Um, and yeah, we're working with brands around the world. We're getting inquiries from big, big tech companies and things like that. And uh, yeah, and movie producers as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm, you know. I, I mean, I, I definitely get. And not only brand deals, I get inquiries from people. Yeah, like TV inquiries and things like that. But it's all came off the back of this social media thing. Yeah. When you build an audience, you don't know necessarily that these things are going to come in. You just kind of build it, and you, yeah. hope you, you know, in the back of your mind that if you keep doing it and keep doing it you'll get these opportunities. And that's when I started getting, you know, I've got the Ellen Show, you know, and I've got lots of different opportunities with brands and TV and things like that. And it's all come together. And, and um, I can only say to people, like anyone, anyone wanting to build an audience, just do it. Yeah. You don't have to know exactly how it's going to happen, how it's going to build up. Just do it now. Start creating content. And if you stick to it over time, I believe in the vision things will start coming to you yeah. and, uh, and, and that, will, that will definitely happen. And I think one of your best gigs must have been before me for the Future King. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was, we were there, it was fascinating when you just did a private show for, for, for Prince Charles and, and um, Her Royal Highness Camilla. Yeah. Um, you know, what was that like? That was... Yeah, 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 that was, that was, that was amazing. You had the show. <laughs> I think he even said, didn't he, that... Your performance was probably one of the best of the night. I met some, there's some big profiles there, Ben Teller and... Yeah, and yeah. No, that was great. And it, and it was, uh, yeah, and it was pretty much in a private room. There was only a handful of people in there and it was one-on-one -on -one magic. And uh, 
yeah, he loves he loves magic. So uh, that was that was fun to do, and um, yeah, he was definitely he was definitely impressed. Great. So I want to thank you for coming on the podcast. It's always a pleasure to have you. He's always traveling around, Lucas, so to get him uh, was a great thing in the studio. And um, so I'm going to say this: Where can people follow you, Luca? Just type in Luca G on any platform, yeah. and I'll, I will pop up. It will pop everywhere. So check him on uh, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Ever Luca's always there, and he's doing some great things. And uh, yeah, so take his steps, follow his advice. He's got over three billion views now, so knows what he's talking about. And, uh, and if they yeah. want to find more tips on how to go viral. We did another podcast yes, on the exact did. formula of how to go viral, how to make your videos engaging at the start, how to give them a twist at the end, how to do all that kind of stuff. So if they want to learn that. Yeah. They can go through Business Mental podcast. podcast make sure you subscribe, review. That. In fact, Kyle, we'll put that in the, the links below. Um, there's uh, loads of stuff we've done um, together. Me and Luke, we've got a strong relationship doing lots of things. So yeah, keep tuned. I'm sure we'll have them again in the podcast. I'm sure you'll come back and uh, share some more stories. Great. Thank you for being on again. Thanks. Thank you. So thank you for watching that video. If you want to see other videos and great guests, make sure you subscribe and like the video. So you can now head over to my website where you can see a bit of my story of building and scaling my businesses and also all the free resources and tools which you can help you on your journey in your brand and your business. You can also subscribe on the podcast so you can check on iTunes, Spotify and other locations where you can find the podcast. And I look forward to catching you very soon. Thank you.